What was Hollywood like in 1994 when DreamWorks was founded? What was the economic and artistic atmosphere? Mm. It was so different than it is today in 2010. Um, it's, you know, there was money. It was, um, you know, it was the 90s. Clinton was in office, economic boom. Um, you know, the movie business is always a risky business, but back then there were just many more people willing to place bets and bring money in. Um, this was pre you know, internet boom and internet bust. Um, so there were just sort of these new technologies kind of hovering on the horizon and people were becoming interested. So digital media was new. So it was kind of this almost exploratory time. When DreamWorks was formed, they were definitely a part of that. I mean, when they formed in 1994, they weren't only going to be a movie studio, they were going to do TV and uh, records and video games. You know, it's, I think that sort of symbolized or was a metaphor for just the whole um, environment at the time, which was this kind of sky's the limit, multimedia everything. You know, these guys were middle-aged, um, you know, they were ready to kind of have their names on a company and, and actually own what they were doing and, and, you know, have, you know, have their own studio. DreamWorks set out to sort of be the anti-studio, or at least the anti-corporate studio. I mean, by this time, all the studios were basically owned by conglomerates. Columbia Pictures was owned by Sony, um, Paramount. They all sort of had these, these New York conglomerates that owned them. Um, and so DreamWorks was going to be independent, and they weren't. They just wanted to put art first. So they just wanted to not do the, the formula thing where every summer we need to have three blockbusters and we need to you know, make gross-out horror movies for very cheap that make money. I mean, they really wanted to, the intention anyway, was, was to actually make good artistic films and not be driven so much by the bottom line. For a few years, they were regulars at the Oscars um, with American Beauty and Saving Private Ryan and Gladiator. But I think they just weren't, for, for various reasons, it was very dysfunctionally management-wise. Um, they didn't have a library, which is basically what sustains studios. You know, when you, you know, you're inevitably going to have flops, and in in when you have a library like uh, MGM, which has tens of, you know, dozens of years of movies that you get revenue from DVD and cable and, and all that, um, you know, you don't have that. It's just that much more difficult. So, for various reasons, they, the, the you know, they, economically it wasn't working, and ultimately they did sort of, you know, by the end they were. You know, they bought Baywatch and they made Transformers, and suddenly it did become about, you know what, we need to make the kinds of movies that, you know, there's a reason the studios have a Spider-Man every summer, or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, so. What was the tipping point when the studio started to sort of decline, and was it a result of that mismanagement, or was it about the economy and digital media rising? And everything like that. What, what it was it was a lot of factors. I mean, part of it was what was going on in the marketplace. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, the you know the record business basically imploded in the midst of you know by the late 1990s, and Napster came along, and so that made that division. You know, ultimately they sold the record label. Um, as far as TV, the law, the Fin Sin laws changed so that suddenly. You know, before studios like Disney or Fox couldn't buy, couldn't produce their own, or couldn't buy um, the TV shows that they produce. So if you were, so therefore they would, they would have to go to someone like a DreamWorks. But when those laws changed, almost a year, like literally a year after DreamWorks was formed, suddenly Disney, with whom DreamWorks had just signed this 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 deal, could actually just buy its own shows. So. That you know the TV the TV situation or landscape changed so that it made it that much more difficult for an independent producer of television shows to survive. There was just a lot of dysfunction. They were never able to make the you know they had set out to make a dozen films. I mean studios make nearly thirty a year, twenty to thirty, and DreamWorks had a much more modest much more modest ambitions just to make 12, but they could never even do that. So should inmates just not be running the asylum? Is it just not a good model in general? <laughs> I, the inmates can run the <laughs> asylum, um, but there has to be a prudence and kind of a, you know, um, a cautiousness. And part of the DreamWorks problem was that these three guys were titans. They were moguls when they started. And, you know, it's hard to go from being Steven Spielberg and David Geffen, who are used to just spending a lot of money and having a lot of money to spend, to being a startup. And I think that was part of the problem. I mean, ostensibly, they were a startup company. But they were a startup company with $3 billion in capital, and these three guys who were years and year, decades away from knowing what it felt like to actually be a startup. So I think, you know, when they, hence when they started, it was just spending money like crazy, big ambitions, wanting to build this state-of-the-art studio, 
um, you know, with helipads and a lake, and you know, so it just. I think it was, it was part of it was just you know how do you how do you how how do people at that point in their lives really sort of turn it back and and sort of go back to just being modest and careful and sort of figuring it out slowly as opposed to just kind of you know raging through the gates.